Hi, good morning, and welcome back to Create, Share, Inspire podcast. This is Friday, and we are in my backyard. It has been extremely stormy again here, so we are keeping safe under a roof <laughs> so that my phone doesn't get wet. Would hate for that to happen. I won't melt, but I don't think my phone would last. So we'll wait here a couple of seconds for people to pop over from the pre-chat room and or get their notifications to join us live. Hi, Joe. Good morning. Thanks for joining live. Welcome back. So some people get notifications and that takes a couple seconds and some people get notified from the pre-chat room. Hi, Cherie and Anna and Judy, Sanchel. Thanks for joining live, everybody. Good morning, Lily. Hi, Brenda. Hi, Barbara and sweet Melissa and Maria. Glad you all could be here. Happy Friday. Hi, Jolene and Sarah May. Hi, Christine. Hi, Melanie. Hi, Olivia. Ah, people have got their packages from me yesterday. That's wonderful. Yeah, I've been, the sale has been going very well. I know a lot of people have been taking advantages, advantage of the different sales that I've done each week for Christmas in July. So make sure you sign up for my mailing list if you haven't already, because Sunday I will be announcing what's going on sale next week. Each week this month for the entire month of July, each week I will be listing different things on promotion. <laughs> So the first week was books and patterns, and this week is Be So Lush, Be So Bold, Be So Baby, and Be So Serene Yarns. Next week, we'll do something else. The fourth week, we'll do something else, and then the few extra days of the month, there'll be one additional. So there's actually going to be five different promotions for the entire month of July. Super fun. Glad everybody's been enjoying it so far. I love the surprise aspect that no one knows until Sunday what's going on, go, what's going on promotion next. Did you want to say good morning? Baby Bjorn wants to say good morning. Not really. He just wants cuddles. Well, welcome back to Create, Share, Inspire podcast, everybody. This is episode 437, and we're here live in Southwest Florida in my backyard because that storm in the Gulf of Mexico is causing tons and tons of storms here and it's just been a rainy mess so to keep my phone safe i thought it was safer to do the podcast this morning from my backyard again if you're joining me live please say hello if you end up watching the recorded version of the podcast please also feel welcome to say hello i know most people watch the recorded and so always feel welcome to leave comments i get notif notified about those throughout the day and can chat with you as well. Hi, did you want to say hi? No, I think he wants to fall asleep. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions for me this morning? Hi, Rose and Cheryl, thanks for joining live. Okay, bye. <laughs> Becker is apparently the director this morning. He's just sitting off on the side and observing me. Hi, Jill and Pamela and yeah, he just wanted a little cuddle. <laughs> For anybody that's wondering, I'm wearing my tassel earrings today. These are done in Be So Fine yarn and such a great yarn for making tassels. Thought you might like to see these up close. So we've got a bead on the top, another bead down below, and then the tassel. You can see the pattern on my website. You can find the video embedded in the pattern and or on its own here on my YouTube channel. I do have a playlist for jewelry collectively as well. So if you wanted to look for this specifically, they're tassel earrings, but if you wanted to look at more jewelry, you would look for the jewelry playlist here on YouTube as well. Thank you, I'm glad you like the earrings. I love them too. I've made them in a bunch of different colors and I wear them a lot. A couple of times people have commented that they don't necessarily like the length of these. And keep in mind, you can cut that fringe any length you want. So if you wanted a shorter, more modest tassel, you could cut them an inch long and that would be pretty as well. And definitely, or maybe a little more daytime. This is definitely a little more dramatic, dramatic not traumatic, dramatic being longer. <laughs> 
If you missed the podcast yesterday, we talked even more extensively about uh, foundation ovals and we talked about how to increase in foundation ovals and we talked about how to make fringe with foundation ovals and did fringe in a couple of different ways. And so this morning, I thought it was going to be fun to show you how to add fringe, how to add beads in a couple of different ways to foundation oval fringe. Won't that be fun? So I brought a couple of different kinds of beads. We're gonna talk about beading in a couple of different ways and then we'll apply it to two different styles of the foundation oval fringe. Does anybody have any questions before we get started? Thanks, Cherie, I'm glad you thought it was interesting. Me too. And you know, beading something we can discuss on any technique. Once we talk about a technique, then talking about how to add beads to it is a whole other subject as well. Because how you add beads to any type of a technique is slightly different than how you would add beads to a different technique. There's always something to think about how you want it to be positioned or how you want it to show up or what you want the look to be. There's always a lot of creative input into figuring out where you want them. Do you want them to be complementary to the color of the yarn? Do you want them to be contrast to the color of the yarn? Uh, do you want them to be the same thickness at the yarn? Do you want them to be smaller than the yarn to just give a shimmer? Do you want them to be larger than the yarn so that they're more of a bold statement? There's lots of different ways to think about beads. <clears throat> do you want them to be uniform in color or size or shape? Or do you want them to be uh, assorted in color, size or shape or all the above? So you can see that even when you're choosing your beads, it ends up being a whole a whole in-depth discussion as well. There's so much to think about and talk about in any design element to your projects. But I'll wait and see if there are any other questions before we get started. Hi, you wanna come back? Okay, one more. Ah, Jane's done some of my beaded kits. That's great. Yeah, I have some really beautiful beads in my shop. And some of the beads you're gonna see this morning are, I have a dried protein shake on my lip. Good thing it was a light color, otherwise I'd have a mustache about it too. <laughs> That's funny. It was cinnamon flavored, so it was like kind of creamy white colored, so that's why you can't see that I have a crusty mustache. <laughs> okay, I think it's gone now. <laughs> Uh, Grammy wants to know if I use the crochet hook method. I'm guessing you mean for adding beads and that is something that is determined by the size of the hole of your bead. Depending on how big the hole is in your bead and the size of the crochet hook you're using, for example, this wooden bead has a rather large hole. Depending on what size crochet hook you're using, you may be able to fit a smaller crochet hook into that hole. But then for example, on some glass beads, and here's another glass bead that we're gonna use today. Isn't this beautiful? Um, I love these beads. These I haven't listed in my shop yet, but I have upcoming projects coming where you're gonna see a bunch of beautiful colors of these beads as well. This bead is glass and it has a smaller hole. So unless you're going to go with, unless you can find a super duper tiny crochet hook to fit in there, but then it's gonna determine how much of the yarn you can fit through there too. Because remember today we're using Be So Tender yarn, which is a number four worsted weight yarn. And you need to, you would need to either get, if you were going to do the crochet method, you would need to be able to get two strands of your yarn through this as well. When you're threading yarn onto, when you're threading beads onto your yarn, you're only needing to put one thread one strand of the yarn through and then you have a little more freedom with thinner be thinner hold beads hope that makes sense so you can use a beading needle yes someone mentioned flossers i've definitely used flossers in the past uh, i do sell four packs of these really great collapsible large eye beading needles and what you can see here is that it has a super large hole here which means it's easy to get your yarn through there 
without needing to put on reading glasses. And because it's collapsible, it means that it's not rigid like this kind of a wide eye yarn needle. This, because this is a rigid wide eye, yes, you, don't, you can put your yarn through that without needing reading glasses, but it doesn't collapse, it's rigid. So this would never fit through a bead with a small hole because it won't collapse. But the beauty of these is that they're large, you can get any size yarn through there, but they're collapsible. So they will smush together and easily still fit into a smaller hole of a bead. So these are things to think about when you're going to be beading as well. So that was a great question about the crochet hook method. We won't be using that method today, but not to say that we can't use it another day when we talk about beading in general. Today I was specifically using a couple of different beads to talk about beading in reference to the foundation novels. But yes, a whole other day we can just talk about the different tools and tips and tricks for beading in general. So great question. If anybody, if I see any other questions, I'll stop. But otherwise, I think I'm going to pull out my demo and get going. Whoops, I dropped a second project on the floor. Let's pick that up. Okay, so for any of you that didn't watch last night, this is where we did our increases in foundation ovals, which I think would be so amazing as a side-to-side -side skinny shawlette or as a bottom-up triangular shawl. Wouldn't those scallops just be fantastic if you started a shawl skinny here and then just worked your way up and made the, whatever size triangle you wanted? Those scallops are so pretty. So we did small, we did one scallop increases here, and then I showed how to do a three scallop, not scallop, three oval increase here. So if you're interested in the increasing topic, you could um, uh, watch yesterday's podcast. Then we also talked about how to add fringe. We did that on the other side here. We did individual fringe. I didn't weave in my loose ends, so you'll have to try to overlook those for a second. So we have a singular fringe here in foundation ovals, and there's pluses and minuses to doing the looped and the singular, right? The singular, you have to cut your yarn at the end of each strip, but there's a benefit to that as well because you could put a bead there and make a decorative edge on there. The, otherwise, you have ends to weave in. If you do the continuous loop method, and that's doing a long loop of foundation ovals and then joining it and then doing another one and joining it, then you don't have to cut your yarn between them. But if you wanted to bead these, you would have to cut your yarn at some point to thread all of your beads on in advance and then be able to put them on. So or use that crochet hook technique. If it works with the yarn you're using, the size of the hole of the bead you're using, and uh, and whatever tools you have to use with it too. So there's a lot to think about, right? So however you want to do it, or whatever choices you wanna make, determine what technique you would use. So first today, I thought it'd be fun to take this singular fringe and add a bead to the bottom of it. And so for this, I'm going to need my beading needle, not necessarily, well, let me start with the yarn needle because I want to show you a couple of things here. By adding one bead to the end of it, you end up creating a situation that you may or may not like. And I'm going to show you an alternative that actually makes it look more professional and more uh, put together. So we'll start by taking our yarn needle and thread it onto the yarn, onto that tail that we cut at the end of the fringe. And I'm gonna slide my large bead right onto it, okay? So now, to come back around and join this, we're gonna go, come back up to the yarn. And by doing that, we create a loop on the side of the bead. Now, when you're doing beads on the edge of a project or in the middle of the project, that doesn't show up so much, but here I find it's kind of distracting. So I want to show you a way that we can eliminate that. So what you want to do is add a secondary smaller bead that is sometimes called a stopper bead. 
And in order to do that, I'm going to be, in order to use a smaller bead for that, I'm going to switch to my collapsible needle first and thread that one onto my yarn or thread my yarn onto that one. I always say that backwards. I think I could use reading glasses for this too. Give me a second. Almost got it. Wow, the pressure of live and not being able to thread a needle. Can you imagine? <laughs> Definitely adds pressure to the situation. Okay, I got it in there. So now we'll add our big bead. But now I'm going to add a secondary smaller bead so that we can work through it and then come back through this bead and then you won't see that loop anymore. So what I've taken is one of my beautiful little star beads, which you can, you can buy these in my website already. The rest of these beads will become available later on. So I'm adding that secondary bead. Whoops, I can't believe I did that. See that that's, uh, like I always say, I don't recommend doing this in your lap, floating in the air on camera. This would be much better suited to sitting at a table and having the table as your, oh shoot, Fall, okay. Balancing the work in the air and in your in your lap and then in the air is not the easiest way to do this. But like I said, I'm just trying to show you. Yeah, my lamp would be helpful too. But there are no outlets on my porch. Isn't that weird? There's no electrical outlets out here, so. I have no way to add anything out here. Okay, got my yarn threaded again. Go through the bead again. Another fine use for the lamp, if I could use it out here. We'll add our secondary bead. Oh, you know what? And we found a problem. This bead's hole is too small for the double thickness of Be So Tender yarn. So we're gonna skip that and hopefully it'll work with this bead. I don't think it's gonna work with this one either. Well, this is a very interesting uh, problem to have on air because it just shows you how important it is to find beads that work with the yarn that you're using. Um, so if we were using a bead that fit with our yarn, by doing this and then coming back through our original bead, what, would we, what we would be able to create is a situation where this large bead would not have any loop of yarn around it and it would have that secondary bead as a finial on top of it so it would be a more decorative finish and you wouldn't see nearly as much of the yarn when doing that so there's the example <laughs> so i didn't think all of that through this morning as i was preparing and that is a good example to show you of why it's important or why all of those things that we talked about are important because you can easily make mistakes like that. So we'll go back to the original way and we'll tie our knot back into the edge of the fringe. And then once you've tied it on there, you could weave in your loose ends 
back up through the foundation ovals, working back and forth in multiple directions. Okay, and then cut your yarn. And the beauty of adding beads to the foundation ovals is that it adds weight to it. And when you add weight to something that dangles, it ends up dangling more, uh, more vertically. It's not so wishy-washy. So there we have what a bead would look like on the end of the singular foundation oval. Now on the looped one, you need to consider where you're going to add the beads and how you're going to add the beads because you're going to be working them into the foundation ovals, right? And we can cut this and just start over. Where's the crochet hook? There it is. Okay, so let's cut our yarn from our previous loop. And actually, depending on how you're... Because we're now going to talk about adding the beads into a foundation oval, not to that bottom tail at the bottom of them, we're gonna talk about adding them in the middle here. And so you could do that on either the looped one or the straight one, it doesn't matter. So now what we're gonna do is see if any of these beads that I brought with me today will actually thread. Oh, you know what? They won't thread onto this yarn because in order to use, in order to use the needle at all, it's gotta go through two, uh, Let's see, can I grab something quickly? Not sure, but looks like we're coming close to the end of the podcast anyway. So we'll save that for the next time when I can bring other beads and maybe I'll even do it on a thinner yarn so that we have even more options. But anyway, this, uh, glad to catch you. Where can I find the needle? You can get a set of four of the collapsible eye needles on my website. So there are, when you go to the front page of my website, kristinomdahl.com, and you want to shop, you can shop. There's a drop down to shop for yarn, books, uh, single patterns, and then accessories. And accessories is where you would find beads and crochet hooks and all sorts of other things. My body care products, all of those are listed there. And you can find stuff like these needles as well. And if anybody has any trouble finding anything, by all means, always feel welcome to ask me. I am certainly happy to help you. So we'll do the another, another episode on foundation ovals next week, and we'll talk more about adding beads into the center here, because there's actually a lot to talk about there too. There's a bunch of different ways to do that, and I think we could still have quite a bit of conversation on how to pick the right size needle, right size um, beads for the right size yarn based on the holes and based on the everything else that you're doing so there's so much to talk about and uh, we'll do that next week does anybody have any questions about what we did talk about today oh Olivia's only sewn in beads afterwards yeah so this is going to be really helpful for you Yep, there are techniques for popping the bead to the front or back of your work. That's correct, too. Good, Lucy. I'm glad you are going to try it. Foundation ovals can be so much fun. I think the fringe is maybe the most fun, fun part of it, but it's so functional in so many different ways, too. Oh, the belts are fun. I don't, you could make a headband out of a strip of this. You could make three strips of foundation ovals, tie them so that, like, let's miss, make three strips, Tie a knot in them so they're together so that the knot, one knot would be here as the three came across here, the knot would be here and then you could tie it behind and make a three-stranded headband. Wouldn't that be cute? You could do that with the belts too. You could make a multiple strands of foundation ovals and then tie them together. Maybe do knots every few inches and then make that a belt. That would be pretty too. And you could do that in colors or you could do that in solids. Lily, yeah, the corset tie in the Leah Capelet and in the Agnes corset tied cardigan, both from Layers Crochet, both use foundation ovals for their ties. And yes, you could absolutely add beads to that. That is a great idea. 
and the, the points of the last row of the scallops of the Leah Cape would also be a great place to put beads as well. You're welcome, Cheryl. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Cherie did add beads to her Leah Capelet. Good for you. So pretty. Beads are a great addition to yarn. So nice. Okay, so I think we've answered all the questions so far today. So if somebody would like to pick a number between one and five, I will pick one of the <clears throat> Create, Share, Inspire notebooks to grab a quote randomly. I think I saw number one. And let's pick a quote and see what it means to us today. La -dee -da, -dee -da, -dee da la -dee -da, -dee da Oh, this is a nice one. And I think something that anybody can learn from. I know it's hitting me immediately when I read this. Uh, this is by Jeremy Taylor. And his quote is, focus on the strengths of those around you. When, especially when we're having conflict with people in our lives, it is really easy to focus on their weaknesses and focus on what they're doing wrong and how it, and why they're doing it wrong and why they shouldn't be doing what they're doing that's wrong. And there is no cure. There's no solution. There's no light at the end of the tunnel when you're focusing on the negative. It doesn't work that way. And it's so hard because I'm guilty of this too, especially as a mom. I like to discuss the things my son does wrong and try to convince him to do something different and it doesn't work. We end up having lots of conflict if I work at it this way. So I really needed to see this one today. We had conflicts yesterday based on his behavior that I focused on what he was doing wrong. And so I think this is really fantastic and something that I can apply in my life today. And regardless of how it affects me, this could affect you in so many different ways too. Focusing on the positive is always the answer. Focusing on the negative only really attracts more negative. So let's read Jeremy Taylor's quote again. Focus on the strengths of those around you. Let's even try it just as an experiment today. Let's just try it for today, right? And if we try it for one day and we see any amount of difference, there must be a reason for that, right? And that's what I'm going to do today. And I wish that for you as well. Yes, Pamela, especially with kids. Positive reinforcement, right? <laughs> yeah, Cherie, I think we could just at least admit that we could try it for one day. So let's do it. And if it works for you, let me know. Leave me a co Come back to the podcast and leave me a comment. Let's see, Barbara. Yeah, staying positive is always best. It sure is. And why is it so easy to forget? That's why I love doing this every day because on any given day, uh, we all need a reminder. We all do. We all get caught up in our own lives, in our own business, and somehow being positive ends up going to the side. So I just think anything we can do to give ourselves gentle reminders every day is just something that can push us in the right direction. So thank you all for taking time out of your busy Fridays to spend a few minutes here with me. I hope you enjoyed my backyard, Bjorn's little cameos, <laughs> my demos on foundation ovals and beading, chatting with me and everyone else. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. Have a wonderful weekend, and I will see you Monday morning. Bye.